Okay, welcome to the video for the Mighty Doug. Uh, we're going to do a walk around warts and all video uh, showing Doug the motor home. So the first slight issue I've got is that I can't open the bonnet, the release catch isn't working, so I'll have to come back and have a look at that at some stage. I was wanting to show you the um, inside of the bonnet. Oops, spider crawling up the leg. But we've got the gearbox oil down here. Well, at least I presume it's the gearbox oil. Which is nice and clean. And is... up to level as well. Simply clamps on. So I was going to check the oil and um, water just to show you that that was clean but I can't undo the engine um, the bonnet at the moment, the bonnet release. So I'll have a look at that later on. So we're going to move on to starting up. Okay, so we start off with the cab, driver's side door. A pillar. That's your cruise control thing if you can get it to work. Stickers uh, to individual taste, shouldn't be too difficult to remove. And going all the way across the dash, you've got a compartment overhead, which did house a CV, but that started smoking, so I've just I've removed that. I think there's an internal fault with the CV itself. But you can put whatever you like into there. Useful space. You've got uh, the old 1980s reversing camera there, which doesn't work. Look around the door frame. There's still a little bit of light rust, easy enough to remove. Seal down the side to the van body. And a VIN plate. Driver's seat with adjustments. Okay, we'll go around to the passenger side. It's got some carpeting through, which I would probably replace. It's been done fantastically well. Um, got a wee battery box just there. There's a couple of isolators, not too sure exactly. I presume they're for the rear electrics. That's your engine cover. You got the that's the a table leg thing, but I haven't got a table. Um, the box on the cobwebs with I've never actually been in here. Um, a few bits and pieces in it. Interesting. Uh, some lemon sherbets if you fancy a wee snack and a hair grip. <laughs> There's a wee little inverter. I think that's probably a, a dropper actually rather than an inverter um, to provide a 12 volt power supply. Okay, so in through the side door. Door locks work. <clears throat> Past the cobwebs, you can tell it's been here a while. So straight into the living area, you've got the kitchen unit. Uh, you've got some tiles missing. Well, it's not tiles, is it? It's plastic sticky on stuff uh, missing just there. Um, countertop. That's the cool box, big old cool box down there. Cupboards. Which. The casings are not too bad. So you could probably. Um, gas bottles under there. You, you could, you could um, take this facing stuff off quite easily and just uh, clean those up and paint them or whatever you wanted to do with them but the casing is quite solid a slidey one there which doesn't slide because it's not on its runners 
Okay, cook a hub, hot and a hole out of that hood. That's your uh, power board thingy doodly, which it does have power coming to it. Let's see if I switch those on. But I can't get the 12 volt working for whatever reason. I don't know why I'm probably not pressing the right buttons or something. So you've got 12 volt on that side, 240 volt on that side, which is untested, and various other gauges of one sort or another there. Okay. Cupboards. Again, casings are good. Just need the front sorting out really, so they look a bit smarter. If I painted it, wouldn't really go with a paintbrush. Okay, and you've got the bed area there. The ladder, decent mattress. Needs a bit of a clean. Might have, yeah, it looks like there might be some water coming in through there, possibly. I haven't looked under there. It feels dry at the moment, but of course it's hot weather, so it will. Oh, I need a key for that. Seating area here. And the battery is underneath there for the um, domestic supply, which you've uh, got a photograph of. There's a few spares in a the box there, filters and stuff like that. You've got the gas fire that somebody's put in. That's that. Right, moving to the back. So, this is where the dog cages were. So all that's been pulled out, ready to redo. I'll be pulling off the wallpaper and so on, just to have a look behind. Let's have a quick gander. up. There we go, behind there. That's the wheel arch, uh, which is the one that's, um, the locker underneath is a bit rotted out. Okay, got the bumps on that side and underneath that is the water tanks. Um, I can't remember how much they are now, it said in the advert how much they are, 250 litres each I think. Cupboard's over. And that was some sort of stowage thing that they had on the roof uh, originally. It drops that ceiling height down. There's a photograph here of it when it was a new thing. Okay, got the wardrobe as you come in. A bit of hanging space. Another one above. And you've got your light switches and such like as well. <clears throat> Moving through to the bathroom area. This could do with a refurb. There's your bathroom, shower. So all the plumbing and everything's there, it's just a case of doing what you want with it, really, fitting a new unit or whatever. Um, sink. Again, needs replacing. Got your heater here, which looks looks to be pretty new to me. I think that's been pretty recently installed um, and it, it does appear to work off the gas bottle. Uh, quick view of the ceiling. There we go. Okay.
So the floor is lino, not wood, um, but looks quite quite smart. That's the wood from the uh, where the dog cages were, which I've pulled out. Got a dividing curtain here. But um, but um, you got your superhero comics and the bed. Bed is good. Both beds are pretty good, to be honest. To be fair. And underneath that bed is the water tanks. Okay, right. I think that's it for the interior, as much as I can show you. Um, you were asking about the windows, so I'll just try opening the windows. That's how that one opens. Absolutely fine. As does that one. And you've got your blinds and so on up above, which I can't do one handed. But yeah, there's your fly screen blind there. And this one. He opens, but they've not got the um, hydraulics on the side to keep it open. Okay, that's an easy fix. I don't get those from any motorhome shop, I would think. This side, we've got a. Um, a vast spider's web, which is impressive. I've just had a spider crawling up my leg whilst I was um, moving it. And again, uh, missing the hydraulics to keep it open, but you've got that window does operate. Then you've got the walk through to the cab. Nice and wide, plenty of space to get through. So I'm just going to have a walk around the exterior now. Got a bit grubby as you can see whilst it's been parked here. Needs a good wash. I was going to respray the cab. There's a few just minor, very minor bits of rust. Some of that is actually foliage. Um, but yeah, a couple of very minor little spots of rust. Solid underneath. It's not bubbled through. It's actual like stone chips. Um, so uh, yeah, I was just going to take those off and. Then I was going to respray the cab itself. Um, that's all good and solid. It's been parked under a tree, so it has got a bit of green on it, which again, a good scrub will get that off. Two water inlets there, diesel tank there, locker, I don't know if the lockers are open. Yep. You've got the uh, handle for the awning there. That's your water, uh, water tank up there. Okay. And uh, yeah, interesting raffle as you do that. Suggest that it's got a few bits and bobs in it. Uh, certainly worth maybe having a closer look at those. Let's see what's going on there. Peek underneath at the back. There's your big old diesel tank. So, say so access to the filler is not too difficult to replace that pipe that he's doing. Got big rollers at the back it's got quite a big rear overhang there's your chassis just a bit of surface stuff needs cleaning up but no significant corrosion there nothing serious hopefully you can see all of that it's a whopper of a diesel tank 300 litres bejesus and we have one mud flap but not the other side Moving around to the back. Got the bike rack. As you can see, that's had a, a wall up on the corner there. And I was just going to fit some angle on that to replace that. Lights are all good. Big old set of reversing lights. Tow bar, about a two ton towing capacity. Toilet, um, jobby, what's it, thingy me doodly cassette thing. Bathroom window. Ladder going up onto the roof, 
and the non-functioning reversing camera, but it doesn't mean you've got loads of space there for a replacement reversing camera and the cabling should all be in place. And you've got your spare wheel. Round to the left hand side now, the driver's side. Again, needs a bit of a clean. And this is the locker that's been problematic. You can see under there. The wood is a bit on the rotten side. And somebody's obviously taken the floor actually out of this side. Um, if it had a floor originally or whether it was something else, I don't know. Um, but yeah, so that's a wee little project to do with the floor. And the other side, that's the floor in there, which is giving the problem. Um, it was alright when I bought it, but um, then I went and put something heavy in it and that probably wasn't a good idea. <clears throat> That's the stuff that he's been using on the roof. So this was originally the um, cabinet for a generator, so it's soundproof, that's what the egg box stuff is for, and that's why it's got a couple of big power cables uh, going off, because um, you had a, a 240 volt generator in here when the van was new. And that's why it's also got a grill on the outside. So I was gonna replace the, the um, floor and sides in there maybe with metal to make it more durable um, although having that there you do lose some floor space inside if you imagine that's where those dog dog beds were and there's that sort of um, built up bit almost like a wheel arch um, and that is uh, for that locker so you could level that floor out probably in the back if you if you um, chose to make that locker smaller Going on around, oldy squishy tyre, 240 volt hookup. I think that's two 240s, but don't quote me on that. That's the extractor for the um, cooker hood. A few other bits and pieces. Da -da 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 -da. In here, in this one we've got. If I can try and open it one handed. Here we go. Uh, got a tank. Don't know what that is. And various bits and pieces, one sort or another. Uh, you've got a heavy duty jack and stuff like that in there, warning triangles and such like. Nice big locker space again. Right, if we go underneath on this side. There's your exhaust, <laughs> big old piece of kit, and you can see that it's had sort of temporary repairs done there, so that's why it needs replacing. Again, chassis, it's good, no sign of patching, can't see any evidence of previous welds there. <laughs> Massive springs, these things are so heavy duty, look at the size of that rear diff, it's a monster. It really is. So heavy duty. Okay. Okay, so we've done a, a sort of temporary repair to the floor, which hopefully will keep MOT man happy. A couple of big old stainless steel bars under there. And well fastened down inside with spreader plates and things and it comes up that side and over there and then it attaches on at the back there so hopefully that should keep MOT man happy so that's one less job to have to do right we're going to take it for a wee drive now get the steering lock off 
All the gauges work as they should. Good oil pressure, got five bar there. Not warmed up yet, that'll drop it up a bit as it warms up. And uh, going, what should we go in? Easy steering. Visibility is not bad. You can do the right angle mirror on the passenger side, really. Right angle mirror, wide angle mirror. Nice soft ride as well. It's very compliant. I don't know if I've got enough space here to get a gear shift in, whether it's change up or not. It does change up fine the road in here. Yeah, bother. Two of us. 